Welcome to the Heartful Leader Series, Session 7. Today, we are going to look at developing influence in the workplace. And I'm Lakshmi, your host for Pearl by Heartfulness webinar series. Now, everyone is influenced by others, whether we like it or not. Now, have you ever stopped to wonder, you know, what your ability as a leader is to influence people around you? Now, it is said that influence has long been the key to successful leadership. So what are the benefits? You know, some of them could be, you know, if we are influencing others, we could sell our ideas or products easily, you know, motivate and inspire our teammates or implement a decision that we have taken. Basically, effective leadership enables us to get the desired outcome with a lot of grace and ease. Now, who wouldn't like that, right? Now, in this webinar, we will explore the two types of influence, transactional or transformation influence, more so focusing on transformation influence and how to emulate them in our lives. Now, a quick housekeeping announcement, as you may be aware, this is a recorded session, uh, but Balaji and myself, we will be online on the day it is going live. So we would love to interact with our viewers. So please type in your questions in the comment box and we will respond to them as early as possible on the day. Now, our speaker, Balaji Ayer, is a technology executive with 25 years of experience. He's currently at Amazon, and he's doing, uh, playing an engineering leadership role. Now, he's held several leadership positions in multinational companies like Harman, Converse, and Polycom. Now, he's received a master's degree in business management and also an MS in computer science from Louisiana State University. And that's where he started the heartfulness meditation practice in 1994. Now he has been regularly conducting several corporate wellness and coaching programs in many multinational corporations. Now his wife is a good friend of mine and I have interviewed her in Pearl a few years ago. Today I have the pleasure to uh, talk to Balaji on this particular topic and I'm so happy to have him on Pearl. Welcome, Balaji. How are you today? Thank you, Lakshmi. I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for this opportunity to share my experience. And, and you are a, a great host. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So looking forward to uh, you know, discussing with you on this topic, uh, influence, which is uh, such an uh, important topic. And not many of us do pay a lot of attention to this. Of course, talking about this, we cannot miss the famous um, Robert Cialdini's uh, book, Influence, and he's also called the godfather of influence, right? Now, in his book, he described the six principles to help persuade others. Now, if I remember correct, they were um, consistency, reciprocity, social proof, liking, authority, and scarcity. Now, can you explain what that means in this context um, and just give us some examples, please. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I read that book uh, uh, quite some time ago, maybe back in 90s. Um, uh, I, I, I think those are great ideas for influencing. Uh, and it provides a nice framework to think about um, how we can go about uh, influencing others. Um, I also recommend a, a movie called 12 Angry Men, where some of these techniques were used. So please do watch that movie if you get a chance. Um, let's, let's talk about them a little bit more in detail. So let's say reciprocity, you know, it means that, you know, a sense of uh, indebtedness you create in others by, you know, influencing to agree with you. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, you know, if you have seen the movie President Lincoln, uh, I think this was a movie by, uh, uh, actually the movie was Lincoln by uh, uh, Steven Spielberg, uh, uh, where, you know, Lincoln just slowly builds loyalty uh, among the Democratic senators to pass the emancipation bill. And it was a brilliant, uh, a brilliant example of how, how uh, Lincoln used this uh, technique to influence others, to get them to sign a bill. And the next one you talked about is the consistency. Yes, absolutely. Consistency is, is absolutely, people need to know what you stand for and uh, what, you know, who you are and, 
uh, it is easier for them to know you as well and what you stand for. So, for example, if you think of Mahatma Gandhi, you can't immediately think of nonviolence, and it is it's 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 such a brand building, and uh, it's easy for people to understand and follow you, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and social proof is the herd behavior, where you know, let's say, for example, uh, you have your friends, and your friends wear certain clothes. You you also wear those clothes and are they watch a movie certain movie you also watch so you kind of you know uh, get influenced because of uh, your friends or so you now in a in a in a workplace setting uh, you know you could get a team in a in a in a person one person will find it very hard to go against the team now how do you use that to your advantage or use that to team's advantage for example uh, these are the things which which, which can be uh, thought about, right? Uh, and how we can use that technique. Um, uh, as I said in the in the uh, in the movie uh, uh, Twelve Angry Men, in that movie the, the the twelve jury or the eleven juries, the twelfth man is being the uh, you know it's, uh, Henry Fonda. He's trying to influence the rest of the jury members, so he didn't want the social proof to play a role, meaning he didn't want the other 11 people to agree to the same thing because they are pressured to agree on something. So what mm -hmm. he uses uh, uh, a technique called secret ballot, meaning they write down their vote and reveal the vote at the same time. And that way, nobody is influenced on anything or reveal the vote in a secret, secretive manner. So you don't know who really voted for it. Um, mm -hmm. So. So you kind of break the social proof behavior as well. So you can use it in both ways and to, to your advantage. Um, liking, uh, it's, you know, it is people are more uh, likely to say yes to things which they are familiar with, pe people they know, and the ability to use that uh, to be in touch with person. And, and you know, uh, and that is why, you know, if you see in politics, always, you know, they keep saying, hey, go meet with your constituents, go knock on the door. You know, I get knocked on the door even for any kind of council member. And the person walks the road to meet with everybody. Now, next time the election comes around, who are you going to vote? Oh, yeah, I remember that person. That person was came to my door and he, you know, they sp spoke to me. Now, that is another way to uh, influence right. people as well. Uh, in terms of authority, in this case, the authority is not, uh, it's not the authority, meaning you have a power over someone. It's more about authority on what you do. For example, you have a PhD in something or a subject matter expert, um, or you're a policeman or a fireman, you know, you are a specialist in what you do. Uh, then people tend to follow them. They tend to trust them more, uh, hmm. the teachers, for example, right? Hmm. Th thanks for clarifying that on authority, because, you know, when I read it, you know, first it struck out to me as um, somebody with a title, uh, you know, just a boss uh, saying something and the subordinates or the peers have to simply follow because the orders have come from above. So, you know, I was just going to say thank you for, you know, clarifying uh, that. So, uh, yeah. Absolutely. These are great frameworks, by the way. The, these are all very valid techniques to use to influence others. But I will tell you more about them and what, what, uh, how I see uh, uh, influence in a minute. And then last one you talked about is the scarcity, um, uh, which is pretty much creating a sense of scarcity or an urgency, right? A limited time offer, it's a Christmas sale or whatever, right? Uh, we use that all the time in advertising and, and uh, people uh, making a purchase uh, because of that. Um, so, so we use those techniques as well. Um, uh, as I said, these are all great ideas to to uh, to to influence others. Uh, except for the consistency, I think the rest of them could be interpreted as more transactional in nature. You are trying to make somebody to do something uh, mm -hmm. in a in a in a in a very uh, materialistic way, maybe. Uh, but in consistency, could be constru construed in two things, like what, what Gandhi did for nonviolence. He he had that for a long time. Uh, he, 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 he stood for that for a very, very long time, and he moved the country because of that. Um, that's what I think is most important thing, taking a more infinite mindset towards 
towards influencing, not necessarily you're trying to persuade them today. It's more about who you are and, and how you embrace, not, not a you versus me mindset versus a we mindset, right? Um, uh, we, we are not trying to, it's not a game where you are at the end of the cricket match or an end of, end of a football game, you know, somebody is going to be declared a winner. This is a, it's a lifelong trust building exercise. That's how you look at, uh, you should always look at, uh, I think I always look at the relationships uh, and, and uh, look for, uh, look for opportunity to build that trust and relate uh, and build that relationship with people. Yeah. And then you have a transformational uh, influence. Beautiful, Balaji. I think you uh, you bring in uh, very important points there. Trust is kind of the uh, building stone for uh, a relationship, um, and of course, uh, leadership. Um, you know, entirely th that's one of the key factors for being a heartful uh, leader too. Hester elaborated on that uh, very well as well, and uh, also the other point that you mentioned about. Um, uh, you know, having a, a, a transformation leader, as I understand, is you know, a leader who's able to articulate uh, the, the vision or the goal of the organization and make it a shared vision. And as you say, so it's, it's, it's we working towards it. It's like win-win, uh, isn't it? So uh, beautiful right. point, Uswer. Yeah, thank you. So moving on, how do we prepare ourselves? Or in other words, what are the common traits of a leader? who create such a transformational influence among peers? Thank you. Um, I would, as I said, you know, I would start with building trust, uh, like you said. Uh, that's where everything starts. I'll tell you my own personal story. I grew up in, uh, in 70s and 80s in, the middle, in a middle-class family in Chennai, Tamil Nadu in India, South of India. Uh, growing up, I learned a lot from my mom. She was a working mom in the sense, uh, you know, she started working from 50s uh, in, in an office. So she would leave home, uh, you know, sometimes at 5 a.m. She had two jobs. She, she would do a job in the morning first before she starts a real job. Uh, and and uh, and she won't be back until 7 p.m. or so, you know, all doing, going from one place to another in a public transportation. Um, she was super busy with the three kids uh, taking care of them and also taking care of the household. Um, uh, it, it, which the, the, the story I'm trying to say here is about how, in spite of all of that, one of the biggest quality I've seen in her is her willingness to help people. Um, you know, in growing up, I've always seen her, um, you know, housing a lot of people in our house, you know, for extended period, period of times, so, you know, they would come for jobs or marriage or, uh, just for a shelter for some time or any other need they need, uh, they would come help with and she would be readily helping them. And she won't even think twice, you know, whether we can do it or not, you know, when people come for help and she was always there. What it showed me is uh, that, you know, there is never a convenient time for us to uh, help others. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just, you have to have that uh, innate quality to to have empathize with other people and see what we can do to help them to uh, you know to start to build that trust and relationship and mm -hmm. less judgment and more empathy uh, mm -hmm. that is that is my lesson growing up and that's how you start to build trust with people uh, when you are a bit of a selfless and more uh, think about others and empathize amazing uh, that as well you know empathy is uh, also an, a wonderful quality for uh, a leader and particularly when we want to influence others in an organic way and i believe that will also be long lasting uh, right such an influence so are failures more acceptable when leading through influence what are your thoughts on that failures failures more yeah absolutely i mean i i see failure is a badge of honor um, because, uh, you know, I, I, in particularly, I, I can give you examples in the, uh, in the industry um, where, you know, if you look at, uh, uh, for example, Steve Jobs, uh, he was fired from his own company he founded. 
Uh, and he didn't take that as a failure and say, okay, I, you know, I can't do anything. You know, uh, he just didn't give up. He went on to do uh, another company called Next, another company called Pixar, where he made all the movies from. And then he came back to uh, Apple again and, you know, the beautiful products he built. Um, again, uh, it, it goes back to, you know, failure. <laughs> In fact, I, I would even give an example of Lincoln again. Uh, where he was, if I'm not incorrect, he he failed in every, he, he lost every election for public office until he became president. Think about that for a minute. So that's crazy. I mean, like 20 years of failure after failure, but he kept on going up and up. He said, <laughs> you know, he never gave up. And uh, so um, do I consider failure as the problem? No, absolutely not. I think uh, failure can be a stepping stone for success, truly. Uh, it all depends on how we view it. I don't know whether I answered your question. Absolutely. You know, when we were having a conversation on this earlier on, um, you mentioned about humility too. And I was I was thinking, you know, the thought that came to my mind is just, you know, failure foster humility or, you know, humility brings in more acceptance to, uh, uh, you know, uh, failures. I would say that uh, failure taken in the right attitude, uh, it all starts from there. Uh, you know, you, you, you ha- like you said, uh, humility the, with the right attitude of humility makes, it, makes you learn, be more self-aware, uh, makes you build on that. Um, uh, so that's very important. And becoming self-aware, then, you know, we are also able to influence others uh, better, right? Probably, is that something like a starting point, would you think? Oh, absolutely. Uh, You know, I'm sure uh, you would have talked about in this leadership series uh, about Uh, self-awareness. Self-awareness is where everything starts. First, we need to be aware of who we are. Uh, and then starts uh, the listening capability of what other people are saying, and you are able to manage yourself better. And then you are influencing, uh, then you start to build trust, and then you start to build relationships. So that's how it grows one over the other. Uh, Absolutely. And there's really no shortcut, right? The bottom line is we have to transform ourselves uh, for the better. Now, you know, the other thing that I wanted to ask you on a more casual, a personal tone is, you know, uh, if the younger generation were to learn something from you today, uh, what is that that you'd like to tell them? I'm not sure whether I'm a great example, uh, but I will tell you what I've learned so far. Uh, See, my biggest learning uh, in life came from the book I read in 1994. Uh, it's called My Master, Essence of Pure Love by Sri P. Rajagopalachari, or he's often called Chariji. See, in that book, uh, you know, Chariji uh, talks about his own journey uh, in life and, and particularly his journey with respect to self-awareness uh, and meditation. And uh, he he travels to North India to see the guru of the practice, the spiritual teacher of the practice, Sri Ramchandra. He's called Babuji. Uh, he, li- he lived in uh, Sajahanpur in Uttar Pradesh, whereas Chariji traveled from Chennai, which is in Tamil Nadu. Um, when, he, when he went all the way over there, um, it, when he first met him, it was a bit of a shock for him because he, he was shocked by the, the small village, the, the dirty and dusty place in the middle of nowhere and the overall everything about the uh, setup. Um, but I, I, I tell you this, his guru was a frail 65 year old man, simple, but authentic uh, uh, and, and, and humble, right? As soon as he went in, he looked at him, he asked him to sit and then he went and pumped water from a hand pump. And Chariji was watching it and he didn't know what he was doing. He was, Chariji was probably around 40 years old, probably. Um, and, and, uh, and, uh, and then uh, Babuji said, you know, he offered the water to him to wash, uh, you know, freshen himself. He was, felt so ashamed uh, that, you know, he didn't go off to help him uh, to pump that water. 
Uh, and uh, on top of that, he went inside and get a towel for him to dry up. Why I'm uh, narrating this story is because it touched my heart so much because it goes to prove that, you know, his guru did not sit on a pedestal and asked him to be worshipped, right? He got on the job of doing the service. His attitude is one of being humble and be uh, mm -hmm. one of uh, uh, be a servant leader, right? Uh, it made a great impression on me about my own leadership journey, um, starting from the uh, 90s. Uh, whenever I have I have taken the similar approach, uh, and and by the way, uh, Chariji is exactly the same way. He always from from morning to evening, always thinking about others and doing service for others. He was he was a classic example um, uh, of of uh, servant leadership. So, uh, uh, you know, whenever I have taken a servant, servant leadership uh, mindset towards my peers or direct reports or my colleagues, I tell you, it is so much easier to win them over uh, because uh, every time you tell someone to do something, you always going to get a pushback. You're going to get a passive aggressiveness. But when you do what is that, how you can help them and see how what you can do for them, you, you, you get immediate uh, um, uh, buy-in, immediate yes. following. Um, yeah. so, so I would say this, this really uh, shaped my leadership journey and, uh, and uh, I hope it is of some use to others as well. It is absolutely a wonderful sharing, actually. Um, I loved it because you're talking about uh, showing compassion in workplace, uh, not just, you know, it's easy for us to, you know, be good to the bosses and really have the bad behavior with uh, the peers who are below us, but showing compassion to everybody else. And this really leadership is about service and that attitude. If we have that attitude, I think, uh, you know, anybody would have, as you say, a great influence um, with the peers of, you know, family members at home or at work. So uh, it's, it's really Absolutely. Let me add, uh, one more. Now that you said something, I want to add one more, uh, one more experience I've had. Uh, when you said compassion, I would even uh, define it as love. You know, uh, let, let me tell you an example. Uh, once I, I traveled with uh, Chariji uh, 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 to Israel and um uh, and uh, you know he was uh, he was uh, you know he was asking me about every detail. Okay, where, which flight did you take, and what when are you going to leave from Israel to? Because I was coming to Israel to meet him to uh, on that trip, and then going back to U.S. Uh, back to my uh, work, and uh, so you, you could see the care he takes in in making sure. Uh, you know, I'm safe, you know, and, and he did, does that with everyone who comes across, you know, it is, I would say it is not only compassion, it's, it's, it's a, something beyond it's you feel the love uh, uh, in that kind of a leader. And, uh, mm -hmm. I, and, and I, I tell you, you may think that uh, it may not apply in a workplace, but uh, uh, absolutely it does, because I think a love is not a, uh, uh, what shall I say, it's not a, you know, accepted word at uh, workplace. No, absolutely not, because I have been in Amazon and in the leadership meetings, we have talked about love, uh, not, not only just love for the product and the love for the company, why not love for your uh, people uh, you work with? Uh, you know, that's when we will really uh, can become a great uh, place to work. Great point there about love, uh, Balaji. We have, I've had speakers in the speaker series who've talked about, you know, trust building, trust building, uh, resilience uh, in a workplace and, you know, getting centered, but, you know, truly, and being authentic. Everybody has talked about being authentic. Um, so love is such a important, uh, uh, you know, thing that you're uh, sharing now. And it's so critical uh, in this context, I think, because it brings about a connection personally and also professionally, as you say, you know, why not in a workplace? Uh, so thank you for, uh, you know, this lovely uh, discussion. Now, as you, as you were sharing your story with, uh, you know, your spiritual teachers, uh, I just thought it's just a great time to experience 
uh, the uh, practice uh, for people who are you know first timers to the session you know i just uh, tell you that this experiential session the heartfulness relaxation and meditation will probably last for about 5 to 10 minutes so you know just uh, join us without any expectations the key is just to be gentle with yourself sit quietly and it will be a guided session and follow my instructions and then we will talk further all right sit comfortably and close your eyes Now wiggle your toes and feel them relax. Relax your ankles and feet. Feel the energy from the mother earth entering your legs through the ankles moving upwards. relaxing the calf muscles the knees thighs and hips i feel how both your legs are completely relaxed breathe in Breathe out and relax. Now relax your seating area, stomach, and waist. Breathe in. Breathe out. and relax now feel the energy in your back from the top to the bottom your entire back is relaxed breathe in breathe out and relax relax your chest and shoulders feel your shoulders simply melting away Now let the energy gently flow into both your arms relaxing the upper arms lower arms hands all the way to the tip of the fingers Now feel how both your arms are completely relaxed Now relax your neck muscles. Release any tension you may be holding there. Now the energy is moving upwards onto your face, relaxing the jaws, the mouth, nose, cheeks, ear lobes. eyes forehead all the way to the top of the head now feel how your whole body is completely relaxed now 
Now gently draw your attention to the heart. Imagine a source of light that's already in your heart is illuminating and gently pulling your attention inwards. If you're having distracting thoughts, gently brush them off and bring your attention back to the light in the heart. Be very gentle with yourself. Stay still and quiet and absorbed in this thought for a couple more minutes. That's all. Now take your time and gently open your eyes when you feel ready to do so. So thank, thank you, you everyone. Thank you, Balaji.
It was a, a truly brilliant session. And, uh, you know, while I was meditating, you know, this thought occurred to me that uh, heartfulness teachers always say, you know, respond from the heart, right? And I, I somehow it kind of, it felt that, you know, all that we discussed today, uh, you know, to influence the people um, and to have a desired outcome. It's always nice to come from a place of heart. And all that you shared today are very much the intrinsic qualities of the heart, right? Love, empathy, compassion, humility. Um, so yeah, it, it was just a, a wonderful webinar. And uh, uh, any, any last words of closing from you? No, thank you. I really enjoyed talking to you as well. And it was, uh, it was great questions. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to share my experience. Thank you, Balaji. And I, and I wish our audience have uh, thoroughly found this webinar useful as well. Um, so we look forward to seeing you all again in the part two of this session on influence which will be using influence versus control to drive initiatives. Uh, as always, we would love to hear from you. If you have any feedback, comments, questions on this webinar, please put them in the chat box or the comment section of the Facebook and we would uh, you know, take them up and uh, you know, impress you. So take care, bye for now.